Okay, we're going to jump into a little example here. Again, remember, these examples are helping us to see the most commonly used vocabulary and words to get us into the context and to give us a little simple example to understand the situation. So we're going to look at uh, somebody getting ready for a meeting beforehand. And so here we have Fred and Jane, and Fred and Jane are going to be getting ready or planning for a meeting. This is a key to plan beforehand. If you don't plan, you're not going to be very successful. So let's take a look at the, how Fred and Jane approach this. Fred says, I'm going to ask my boss for a raise tomorrow. Okay, so there we go. Pretty common. I think everybody wants a raise. I'd like a raise too. How much are you going to ask for, Jane inquires. So here we begin. What's your goal? Fred says, well, the more the better. And Jane responds by pointing out, if you want to be persuasive, you need to have an exact amount in mind and then convince your boss you are worth that amount. Right, there's a really key point. So here, right here, this, this sentence here from Jane is the key point of what we're looking at today. If you want to be persuasive, you're going to have to have a number and attach a value to that number. Fred says, okay, I won't give in until I have at least a 15% increase in my compensation. I'll convince my boss I'm worth it by emphasizing the work I did last month on that job. I made a big profit for our company. So Fred changes his direction a little bit by saying I've got a specific goal, 15%. And I'm going to value that based on last month's project. So here we attach a, a, a value. We can judge our success or failure by that value. And we also can convince our boss, hey, that value is a good value for you too. You can give me this. I get my value. You get your value. So it's all about that valuation concept, which I like that idea a lot. Okay, let's go on here. So let's jump over to a meeting now. So we've got an actual meeting going on and here we see Fred is going to actually uh, talk with Bill to prepare for uh, another negotiation. Fred says, we cannot assume the Xeno products we purchase will be successful in the market. Bill says, our marketing department predicts strong demand for this product. The implication is that Zeno will try to ask for a higher supply price. So here we have Fred and Bill. They're planning for a negotiation. This is before the negotiation, not, not after the negotiation, not during the negotiation. This is before the negotiation, the key point. And what is it they're talking about? They're talking about the company they're going to bargain with, they're going to negotiate with. And what is that company's name? Zeno. And what's the key point they're coming to? They're trying to figure out what's the value? What's the value? We want to buy a product from Zeno company. How much should we pay? How much should we give in to what their demands are and how much should we demand? Well, this depends, doesn't it? If we buy the product from Zeno and we try to sell it in the market and it does not sell well, then we should pay less, shouldn't we? We should take less risk, right? If the product we buy from Zeno sells very well and we make profit on that, increases our sales volume, then we should be willing to pay more and we should be willing maybe to take more risk up front because we have more payoff in the back end. So here we really need to plan ahead and that's what they're doing. Fred says forecasts are not always reliable. We don't want to pay too high and sell low. Bill says, this is going to be a tough negotiation. And Fred says, before the negotiation, we need to be clear on what our goals are. And Bill says, any price over 120 USD, we will have to reject. So here we come into a very clear goal. And I think that's the goal of this class, is to learn about those goals. Uh, 120 USD is our goal.
Okay, let's continue on with this uh, talk here. Fred says, that is our upper limit. I understand, but we also need to emphasize production cannot be delayed. So we've got kind of a main idea here, 120 is the price, USD. And we also need to talk about the timing of the delivery or the production cannot be too late. What is the latest date we can accept, Bill asked. What is our latest date for that delivery? And Fred says, we cannot postpone Christmas sales because Christmas is a fixed date. It's a very big retailing time. So if we want to get the product into the market in time for Christmas, we're going to have to take delivery earlier than that. And supplies, Fred says, must be delivered at least two months before Christmas season, at least two months before Christmas season. Bill says, give me an exact date. So here I really like this. We're making the goals clearer and clearer, trying to be more and more specific, less and less general. And Fred says, we need to take delivery of the goods before September 1st. So now we're very specific. Bill says, we should consider stressing a price of 100 USD. If Zeno threatens to withdraw, we can suggest they guarantee delivery in time in return for a price of 110. Now remember, the goal was 120. Now we're going to go lower on the price, 100. Why? Because then we can give up a little bit. What will we give up? Give up $10, up to 110, and that way, pressure Zeno to make sure we get delivery on time. Fred says, they may accept that if we are persuasive about our ability to increase their sales with the implication we would cooperate with them in the future. So if we can convince them persuasive, they may do that, but we also maybe have to guarantee future purchases, a future relationship so that they feel will sell more for them, right? This is where things get interesting. It's never the case that a business works totally on its own. If I'm buying from Zeno, they want to sell to me. They want me to succeed to sell more. If I sell more, I make more, they make more. So in this way, we create a relationship. But it's not just that simple because they don't know that I'll sell more. It's a risk for them. I don't know that their product will sell well. It's a risk for me. So everyone is carefully measuring their risk and they're trying to get the biggest payoff up front. And that's really what uh, Fred and Bill here are talking about. They're trying to see how can we minimize our risk, maximize our payoff up front, and maybe create a long-term payoff. Bill says, of course, but we must test their lowest price. We must test their lowest price, try to get the lowest. Let's put off the delivery issue and first deal with the price issue. After we test their price, we can submit the delivery proposal. Okay, so now we've gotten very specific. What are our price targets? 120, we wanna start out at one. We're willing to jump up to 110, and that way we can pressure for the uh, delivery time, for the production time. However, which one should come first? Which one should come second? First should be price. Let's talk about price first. If we talk about price, we can test how w willing are they to go down on that price. Then we get a feeling for that, we can bring up the delivery. So maybe we can push on price. If we get the low price, if we get 100, hey, great, that's good for us. Our target was 120, maybe we get 110. If they're very hard to push to 100, they resist, then maybe we are willing to pay more because remember our target's 120, but we can give up something like 10 more dollars and then get back on the delivery, use the delivery. So we don't want to give everything up front. We want to step by step, give up a little bit and test a little bit. So where do we begin? We're going to begin by testing on their price. Fred says, that all sounds good, but we need a fallback plan. 
I like that idea of a fallback plan. So what we've done here is we've gotten our targets, we've gotten our order. Now we need to say, hey, what happens if things don't go right? What do we do? And Bill says, yeah, I've seen Zeno people negotiate before and they are tough. So here's a really key point. Who is your counterpart in the negotiation? Who are you negotiating with? Who's on the other side? If you know something about them, if you have some experience, or you can talk to someone with some experience, this may help you to understand. This will help you to get ready for the negotiation beforehand. And Bill says he's seen the Zeno company negotiators, and they can be very tough, meaning they hold on, they don't give up any, any uh, dollars easily, they don't give up any, any concessions easily. And Fred says, the Zeno negotiators are often uh, renegotiate points that were already settled. That's a strategy. We're going to learn about this strategy later, but this strategy of renegotiating means up front they may say, yeah, yeah, okay, we agree. But then later they say, you know, we don't want to do that. We're going to have to change. So maybe at the beginning they say, yeah, we'll give you 110. But then later they say, ah, 110, we can't give you 110. I talked to my boss, he refuses. So this is renegotiate. So this makes it hard because when you try to test their price they say yes but then later they say no. That's a kind of strategy. In this case we just call it renegotiating. Bill says tomorrow we will have a meeting with all the people on the negotiation team. At that time we can brainstorm and come up with a good fallback plan. So in this case we've got a really good example here. Two examples. One example is very simple and straightforward. And that example is, I want to negotiate for a raise. How do you begin? Target. What's your next step? Value. How is this raise related to the value you get? So I can convince you what you're paying me is a good value for you. Good for you and of course good for me, but equally good for everybody. You're getting something. That's my goal. Whether or not it's true is a totally different matter. We're not talking about what's true. We're not talking about what's right or wrong. We're just talking about how to get the other side to give the concessions you need, which in this case was pay, very simple. The next example is a little bit more complicated, but very common, getting ready for a business negotiation. And in this case, it may be complicated. It involves prices, products, shipping, quality. How do you get ready beforehand? Set your goals clearly. 